Good morning. President Garibaldi, distinguished guests, friends, it is truly a pleasure and an honor for me to be here and to speak to you on such a blessed occasion. Um, I just celebrate the wondrous words of um, Professor Ahmed Saleh, who said it so beautifully about the openness and the inclusiveness, what we really desperately need in our world today. In the short few minutes that I will have with you today, um, what I propose we imagine and act upon and make happen is the concept of togetherness. Sufis, the Muslim mystics, that's the, known, the name they were known with because they wore wool or sof in Arabic. They just wore a very simple uh, cloak. These Muslim mystics and their leaders are sometimes affectionately referred to as the awliya or friends of God. Talking about having friends in high places. They believe that we are connected with God in ways that are not conceivable, that are not possible to put into simple referential language. They very often use poetic imagery in order to make that understood. And one image they used in this regard was the image of a drop in an ocean. We are a drop in the divine ocean. And how can we say where the drop ends and the ocean begins? These friends of God also believed that we are all connected with the entire universe around us. We are in this together, and therefore we should celebrate this togetherness. But unfortunately, very often we do not, and that's how Rumi, the great mystic, I hope many of you are familiar with, and I'm sure you are, said, if only we spoke the same language. In other words, if we do not celebrate this togetherness, it's not because we do not want to be together, it's because we do not understand the language that the other side speaks, and we therefore assume that it's very different from our own. He gives us a beautiful little anecdote that has become known in the Persian and the Islamic tradition as the grape story, or the story of grapes. Here's how it goes. An Arab, a Turk, a Greek, and a Persian are together, and they find a little money, and they decide they should put it to some good use, just something everyone would enjoy. And soon thereafter, they get into a fight, because the Arab says he wants some in up. And the Turk says, no, no, let's get some uzum. And the Greek says, no, let's get some estafil. And the Persian wants angur. Little they know that these words all mean grapes. In the spirit of celebrating creativity and art, I'm going to say that one language in which we can all speak to each other and understand each other is artistic creativity. There are others, I'm sure, and many of you speak them, but this is one language that we definitely as human beings have available to us. And in the field of humanities, which I very much hope and believe that will find more and more place in our education because it's so needed. Um, art, creativity, and expressing yourself in a language that goes beyond everyday facts or figures 
actually help us see that togetherness and experience that togetherness. So in that spirit, I'm going to read a poem to you. I wrote this poem in August of 2001. I wrote it because I watched a beautiful documentary about how the universe had created this huge cosmic blast that led to the creation of the planets and the, you know, the galaxies of the, of the stars. And I wrote this. It was just what was so amazing to me was that in this huge, vast existence, we small beings mean so much. And we can mean even more if we really connect to each other. Well, soon thereafter, the horrendous blast of 9-11 happened. And I never thought about this, but a friend wrote to me, a poet friend wrote to me months later and said, my goodness, it's as if you were talking about that. Well. I didn't realize it, but certainly there are many blasts, internal, external, of cosmic order or of smaller orders, and we have to stick together before it and after it. So I called this poem, Before the Cosmic Blast and After. We were there, you and I, in nameless, quivering subatomic particles during that vast, fantastic collision. After the condensed core of something, perhaps love, exploded into stretching Milky Ways. After the heavy cosmic fog lifted and all heavens were one outspread, star-studded night, glowing with here's and with out there's. We were there, you and I, in a strange, thunderous, cosmic way. Then colossal neighboring star systems collided, and collided so carefully that no two stars crashed. Cosmic dust showered the face of the earth and giant continents moved to make way for the small nucleus of life. A faint heartbeat was to give the rhythm of pain, ignorance and longing echoes of boisterous proportion. We were there, you and I. When the naughty corks dashing about subatomic particles taught little rabbits the art of messing the neighbor's garden. When the blazing suns in the golden depths of a tiger's eyes lent your feet and mine, their mysterious urge to dance. We were there. How else could we invent a new language every time you're lost at, at the outer edges of laughter and pain and still speak to one another? How else could we feel at home in so many nowheres unlike the ones in which we were born and brought up. How else could we live with famines, wars, airtight rooms, the eternal murmuring of television in the background of life, and still remember from time to time who we intended to be someday before the age of six or eight? We were there together. How else could we mess so freely with the syntax of each other's culture? Be pulled between the black holes of arrogance and self-pity. Declare cold-blooded war and seasons as warm and welcoming as womanhood. 
and still, still recognize the contours of each other's hearts. How else? I take one look at you, just one, and see the unbreakable that keeps us connected. The impossible that will live through a hundred cosmic blasts. Do not be offended when I laugh. The shape-shifting you think is a safe den is a thin disguise. I too hid behind the skinny trees I trusted when I was six. I see. I see not because I am old enough now or exceptionally far-sighted, but because we were there together in some unknowable, small, insignificant way in that thunderous world of collision and love before the cosmic blast and after. Thank you.